The question is that the motion be agreed to. I call the member for New England. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, back on the 9th of September, Neville Smith was fighting the fire in uh, Tenterfield next door to your seat, uh, and he was severely burnt, spent months in hospital. That was an omen that, quite obviously, this was a fire season that started early and would be more ferocious. I remember going to Tenterfield and seeing the town isolated. And it looked like something from Dante's Inferno as I sat on the hill and was pondering how people were dealing with the fires, those on the peripheries, those fighting it, and those isolated within it. To see fires actually burning through the town was something that was quite uh, awe-inspiring and horrifying. But, Mr Deputy Speaker, that was merely the start. That was merely the start. And I go to three names, that of Vivian Chaplin, George Knoll, and Courtney uh, Partridge McLennan, who all died uh, in the seat of New England. An absolute tragedy. You should never judge a tragedy by numbers. What is too many people to die? One. One is too many people to die. Uh, two from Waitalabar and one who died of an asthma attack, an asthma attack brought on by the smoke. Mr Deputy Speaker, we lived in the New England with the experience of fire. It was so intense that where I lived, the spiders were dying in the roof and falling out because after such a period of smoke, um, they, they could not survive. It, it's the ramifications of the fire went way beyond where the fire was. If you went to the pool, the pool was closed because it, the pollution level, it was unhealthy. You couldn't exercise. It was an issue which looked hellish. To wake up every morning, and I'm sure you saw a lot of the clips um, on such things as sunrise, that the sun just re raised as a red ball. And you knew that that was a sign that other people, their lives were hell and they were fighting those fires. When we look at what happened across our nation, but for the intent of this speech in my electorate at Noundog, where people, we talk to mates of mine, blokes I played football with, and they resiliently say, my, my property will go next. It's going to get burnt out. We're trying our best, but we know this is not going to work. When you look at Ebor, where unfortunately a person was back burning around a marijuana crop, and I say that not to, for, in a sense of mirth, but to show people the consequences of actions. And by the time that fire had started, there were, pyro, pyroclastic, there were pyrocumulus clouds that were actually changing the weather. You would see it and it was, uh, you knew once more that it was something like an inferno. For miles, for 100 kilometres away, you could see this pyrocumulus cloud. That was the result of a, mis a misdemeanour, probably not malfeasance, but a lack of thought, a lack of understanding of the consequences consequences in a time where the, where the whole of our landscape is a tinderbox. And when you see fires and you say, oh, they won't, won't burn across that ground, in the right conditions, they will burn across anything. To see straw just rolling along a light. To see an area where all the cow pats were alight and smouldering. Um, the fires at Nundal, Guy Fawkes National Park, and also the fires at Moonby. And I say Moonby because it was one that I was fighting myself. You, to understand as you drive along the road, to hear that message, and I can tell you exactly where I was. I was at Langothlin driving north towards Tenderfield to, to try and see what I could do as a politician to assist the people in Tenderfield with the, the issues of their fire. And I heard that a fire had just started near the New England Highway at Moonby. I knew what that meant because I've lived in the area for 50 years. That meant the fire was going to go to home. I did a U-turn immediately hearing that on the radio and started going back. You're ringing the neighbours and saying, where do we meet up? How do we deal with this? What's, what's the process? What's the drill? Um, we knew how the fire would burn through and we knew where we had areas where if it broke out, we had real problems and the areas where we could try and engage and burn back and deal with it. One of the great things of our nation, the stoicism, the, the ethos of you've got to um, give a guy a fair go and to stand by your mates, is never better encapsulated than when you go to the middle of your neighbour's paddock in the middle of nowhere and there are fire trucks with their names emblazoned from towns all across our nation. They have turned up 
at your place, at your area, to help you. But they have never met you before in their life, and they are not paid to do it. That describes one of the things that comes out of this. What an incredible nation we are. What an incredible nation that a former Prime Minister of Australia is not doing speaking circuits, is not uh, basically writing books. He's fighting fires at Drake. He's fighting fires around Tenerfield. He's doing it with his mates and he's doing it over a long period of time. When you talk to him and say, Tony Abbott, why are you doing this? He says, I get paid a pension from Parliament. I got staff. I don't feel like I'm doing this for free. I feel like I'm doing this because it's what an Australian does. Not what a Prime Minister does, it's what an Australian does. This is the essence of who we are. This shows our better angels. So, on the back of that, and acknowledging the tragedy of Vivian Chaplin, of George, and of Courtney, and our hearts go out to their families, and to acknowledge the grief of people such as Mayor Carol Sparks from Glenners, and the tireless work of people such as Peter Petty, Mayor Peter Petty from Tenerfield, or the continuing discussions and ongoing discussions of mayors such as Eric Noach from Walker, and having meetings on Boxing Day, on Boxing Day, because you, you listen to and think, this is so minor what I can do compared to what these people are doing, fighting fires right through Christmas. They're not with their family, they're with their mates and mates they've never met before in their life because they're Australian. Uh, dealing with issues such as making sure there are so many people who do it for free, but other businesses have to get paid. Other businesses that contract have to get paid. And making sure that we pursue, uh, that they get fair compensation for the work that they have done, not as charity, but under, but under uh, contract. And making sure that that issue does not compound the economic crisis in towns, small towns such as Walker, that rely so much on the contracting businesses, on the hotels, on the fuel distributors, on all the people who uh, are putting their endeavours towards fighting the fires, but they can't do it for free because they've got a product they have to sell or staff they've got to pay. On the back of this tragedy and the stoicism and resilience of the Australian people, we have to look forward to how we can do this better in the future. I can't stand and I said in an op-ed this morning, I can't stand the word learnings. I always say uh, learning is a verb, knowledge is a noun, and learnings is a nonsense. But from the knowledge that we have gained in this, what can we do better in the future? And I want to mention a couple of these issues. <coughs> On fighting some fires, some of the trucks had to go 100, over 100 kilometres to refill. That means the fire that is in front of you. Um, and you've got to understand the terror. When you're at night, and I could show people some of the photos at my, on my family's place, it is so terrifying just to see this, the silhouette of the hill become emblazoned in red. And you know the fire is getting closer and closer and closer. And you, put, uh, you unplug all, the, all the, the, the tanks around your parents' place, and you go up and you get your firefighting plant. Remember, it can't be connected to electricity because the electricity goes off, the fire plant doesn't work. Connect the fire, fire plant up, make sure all the hoses can reach the vital parts, make sure you've got an alternative plan to get out if something goes wrong, make sure you've got an alternative plan if the firefighting plant goes down as how you're going to put the fires out in your house, work out what are the most likely places in an ember attack that the house would catch on fire. These are the things you do, and guess what? Just as you do it, you, it is an incredible. A truck turns up with two blokes and they're just mates. They said, we heard it's getting close to your place, we're here. And then another truck turns up with what they call a shuttle, which is a water, big water tank with a pump, saying, we're here. You never ask them to come. They just turn up, because that's what Australians do. And then when you say to them, fellas, I think I'm right, you know, you should go home, um, one of them will find, I remember one bloke, um, I won't give his name, you'd get embarrassed. He said, oh, mate, I'm a bit tired, I'll just sleep here the night. Do you mind if I crash out on your couch? You know what they're really saying? You might need help, and I'm not leaving. And isn't it just, doesn't it just get you to think that's, that's actually the, the, the essence of our nation? Oh, mate, I'm a bit tired. I might just crash out on your couch. You know that that is not a lie. That is just 
That is a statement of, don't tell me to go, you need a hand, I'm staying here. The, um, but let's go back to positive things, because you've got to be positive, you've got to look forward. You've got to look how you can do things better. We can't travel 100 kilometres to refill a fire truck, because think of it in that instance. If someone had said, mate, we're out of water, we're going, we'll be back in about, we'll go as quickly as we can, but it's going to be about three hours. Think of in your own minds how that makes you feel with a massive fire coming and you're trying to do the back burning, you're trying to stop the spot fires. You look at the resource and you look at the people in the yellow uniforms disappearing, not because they want to, because they have to, because they've got to refill. We need central watering points. And I propose this as maybe something we can do in a bipartisan way. The government to give a grant in these areas where there's been fire and say, we'll build a dam, earthen dam, not a big concrete dam, earthen dam. And I tell you what, you can use half the water, farmer, state forest, whatever, you can use half the water. The other half is always ours. And it comes with a licence that no matter how much water in, is in there, if the fire starts, it's all ours. It's all ours, no questions asked. That way we're not travelling 100 kilometres, we're travelling 20 or 15 or 10 or 5. And that makes such a difference. You can't stop a raging bushfire. You can mitigate, but you can stop small ones. And you can backburn on small ones. And that's where the, you, know, you don't wait till the bombers are over London before you start knocking them out of the sky. You, as soon as they take off, you try and knock them down. So watering points. What happens in fires when trees are next to road is two things. They burn and fall over the road, or they crack the soils, bake the soils, the soils become unstable and they fall over the road. The consequences of that, if someone, a civilian, is trying to escape from a fire, that's where they stop. And they stop in an area of an intense fire pressure because the, the forest is next to the road. And that's where they die, if they can't go back and they can't go forward and they can't get out. Trees have, the vegetation management laws must be changed so without question you can remove the trees to a, a space where even if they fall over that people can still get out and fire trucks can get in. Uh, it might look quaint having trees next to the road, it might look good, but if they're in a fire area the safety of people is more paramount and it must be, it must be put at the top. Likewise, um, fuel loads. If you double the fuel load, the, the speed that the fire spreads by is, is doubled, but the intensity, the intensity is quadrupled. The heat is quadrupled. And the radiant heat is what's going to kill you in many instances long before the fire gets to you. Um, if you just see what happens in a fire, if you see the awesome, terrifying power of a fire as it races through the heads of the trees, as you can hear it roar, you hear it roar as it comes towards you. It doesn't come up silently, it roars. And its speed is way beyond the speed of a fire truck or a tractor or anything else. Um, but it has to burn something. Now you can't stop the fuel load in the trees, but you can mitigate the fuel load on the ground, and you must do it. Even a bad burn in winter, something that's imperfect, Something that does cause smoke damage to clothes. Something that does maybe get slightly out of control and burns more areas than you need. That is a vastly better alternative than what we just experienced. Because that is the alternative. If you don't do the back burning, nature will do it for you. And it will do it for you in such a profound way that it burns out millions of square kilometres and kills people. Kills people, destroys houses, kills stocks. Um, absolutely brutally maims and kills wild, wildlife. I try to convey some of these things so people know some of the essence of what happens on a fire ground. One of the first things that move off fire grounds uh, are the insects, especially the spiders. And you'll stand in an area and you become very aware that the ground is alive with, cock, with, with beetles, with spiders. They almost, in essence, know that something is on and they're moving out. It's part of this almost apocalyptic feel that becomes as that eeriness and the smoke comes and you know that, that, that it is approaching. We must also in this period of time make sure we have proper communications. So often now we all reach into our phones, the mobile phone. We don't have the two-way radios of the past. 
Um, uh, we've got to get proper communication. The proceedings have been called for in the House. The proceedings are suspended to enable honourable members to attend the division. The proceedings will resume when the chair of the Federation Chamber is resumed at the conclusion of the division or subsequent divisions. <coughs>